news and to the Swedish little here in, in Dubai at the World Expo 2020. It's first time in the middle of a forest. Okay. It's an incredible place. So they have like 85 trees that have been flown in from Sweden to try to showcase what Sweden and Swedish industry is all about. And we're actually been invited to be a part of an initiative that goes throughout the whole Expo this week and it's Space Week. So the focus has been on space and sustainability, and that is the reason why we have been here all week. An incredible experience. So today we're going to talk about private spaceflight. Maybe you've seen that in the news. You say the world's richest man, with, uh, Jeff Bezos, has gone to space. He has like two hundred million dollars. And then you see what Richard Branson. He's also very rich. He only has five million dollars, but still, uh, he went to space. Uh, so is space only for billionaires? Well, it is. This it actually has been for billionaires quite a while. Even if you haven't been able to go up like this, really rich people have been able to buy a ticket to go to the International Space Station. And, and this has been the way it's been going for quite a long time, but things are really changing. Yeah. And your next vacation could actually be space, and you don't have to be a multi-millionaire uh, or a billionaire to be able to do that. So we will uh, tell you why. So first, we ask people, but we always do with the optimist edge, we ask people what they believe. And 90% believe they will never be able to afford to go to space. So of course, that's not that's not uh, you know, a strange opinion uh, at all. You know, it's been only superpowers nation and millionaires. So. Exactly, and, and most people are probably not even aware that there's a lot of initiatives going on that can take people up into space. You don't actually need to be an astronaut and go through the training that you used to, to be able to go. But of course, I mean, if someone would have asked me a couple of years ago if, if you thought you could go to space in your life, I probably would have said no. Yeah, exactly. No, it's a very, very, very small chance at least, but now the chance is much bigger. So, uh, this is what we claim, that you, in 10 years, will be able to go from point A to point B, from New York to Shanghai or some other place, uh, and not be a millionaire or a multi-millionaire, and you will be able to use a rocket and, and like 30 minutes of that flight, you will actually be in space. Yeah, it's quite incredible. And, and, the, and the fact that you, you're actually moving around the planet and experiencing the planet from on high, and not just the fact that you've been to space, but the experience itself is something that we've talked a lot about this whole week, is that we need to view our planet from a new perspective. So maybe everyone will be able to do this in the future. Yeah. That's sort of the idea, isn't it? Pretty much everyone can do it. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to tell you uh, why, and this is the main reason why this is happening now. And here we see uh, Falcon 9, the SpaceX rocket, landing with landed rocket before, but crash landed up. So we can use the now. The landing, so we can reuse them. And it's incredibly exciting. Uh sort of mission they've been on because the, the space shuttle which a lot of people will recognize it's similar to an airplane that way and most of the parts were usable but not even that one was completely reusable and of course that made it very very expensive yeah so let's say uh, you, you you would only use this once this you know uh, space is found online i don't know exactly what it costs now uh, uh 50 million dollars maybe something like that so if you use it once, then the trip to you know the cost of going to space is fifty million dollars plus all the other expenses. But if you use it just ten times, you can then you know it's five million dollars if you use it hundred times. So similar with the you know an airplane. Yeah, I mean that's when you think about it. If we, we travel on an airplane here, if that was the only time that airplane was ever used, yeah. it would have been an incredibly expensive ticket. Uh, but we forget about that when we think about rockets because we're used to them not being able to be used. We'll go through the math here on a simple, uh, simple calculation of how the economics works for a, a trip to space in like 10 years. So you have cost, you have propellant, of course, the fuel going into the rocket. That's not actually that expensive. Uh, you need about 2,000 tons to get a big, big rocket like this into orbit. Uh, that costs about $200,000. Uh, cost of it, as I say, it's $80 million. Dollars. In 10 years, it's going to be much, much less. But say, you know, uh, in a pretty expensive rocket day, it's maybe $80 million. Dollars. So if you use it 100 times, that's eight hundred thousand dollars per trip. You can use it probably many more times, but let's say we only use it a hundred times. So the cost per launch is about one million dollars. Then you have some other expenses, uh, of course, development costs, things like that. But just for one trip, it's one million dollars. 
So let's say you have 200 passenger airspeeds, which is realistic for a spaceship like this. They pay you, each of them pay $200,000, and you have a $4 million income per trip. So that's a very viable business that you know, SpaceX is going now for, for example. So, it certainly is. And obviously, the more, the more they do this, the more they develop it, the safer it's going to get as well. So the, the idea of going to space is not going to feel like a as, like reachable goal or a very dangerous feat. Like we'll be able to develop how we do this and do it in a safe way. So, uh, here's what it could look like. Let's watch this uh, two minute video here. So you might be thinking now, okay, uh, cool, very cool, uh, very cheap, uh, compared to maybe what you thought, but still, $20,000, that's a lot it, of money. It's not something you're just going to pick out of your pocket at yeah. any time, right? You, exactly. you probably need to plan this a little bit. You should probably plan this, exactly. So this is not something that will happen tomorrow. Uh, the development is already going on. This is what the SpaceX is building with their Starship that we saw here. So, uh, oh, now it's, it's expensive, uh, they have a lot of development costs and it's expensive, but the costs are going down. If you use it a hundred times or a thousand times, the cost will go down even more. So, $20,000 is a lot of money, but if you save $2,000 a year or $170 a month, most people uh, can do that. Most people in the, in the rich parts of the world can do that if they want to. Not everyone will want to, of course, but I think there's still millions of people who will want to, you know, do this. It's not just that it's a convenient way of going to New uh, York to Shanghai, it's that you're being in space for 30 minutes, and so far, a little bit more than 500 people have been in space. Only 500 people. Yeah, and Mike is a lot of interest in this. I mean, as soon as some of these millionaires launched their, their ideas to go up into space, people started buying tickets. And so they, they do know that there's a little bit of a group that, that are going to take the first step to join these trips as soon as you can. So what kind of time perspective are we talking, uh, do you think? We think this is, uh, this is these calculations is based on the, on the aerospace engineer, Bill Robert Zubrin, he's also the founder of the Mars Society. So we've done these calculations and he said this is realistic to be able to do in 10 years these kind of trips. Of course, lots of things can happen on the way. Let's say there's a big crash, for example. People die, maybe. Well, that would delay things for many years. You know, things like that could happen, of course. Uh, but if things uh, run smoothly for the next 10 years, the technology is going to be there uh, in 10 years. So in, in 10 years, this is uh, a realistic uh, option. And, and well, it, the, the first tickets in a few years will be more expensive. But like you said, it's, it's 
uh, went some burning lactose started selling tickets many years ago. A lot of people came in and bought tickets, and they were about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars those uh, those tickets. And I met some of those people. It's a very diverse bunch. It's it's the uh, some of them are the people you think, you know, who heard a Google employee that made millions of dollars, but it's also people who dreamt of going to space their entire lives that actually mortgages their houses to be able to buy dreams like that, to fulfill their lives and dreams. So it's, it's a very diverse world. And, it, and it certainly is a life dream for a lot of people and an experience in a lot of time. But it's not just, you, know, you might think that, okay, cool, great for those people, but I don't want to go to space, uh, at least not for $20,000 yeah. or $10,000. So what, there's a lot of other things. Yeah, about. I mean, and that's fair enough. It's not for everybody, but we also have to keep in mind that there is a whole industry develops around things like this. Uh, so if you have the optimist end of knowing that this is going to happen, you might be able to get involved within the services around the spaceports. Uh, when, when we looked at the video before, you can see that we travel from this city to that city, and obviously that would mean that they have to have a spaceport because you can't land a rocket everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So there's going to be services around that. And of course, everything else that develops within communications. So it's a good thing to keep an eye on, I think. Yeah, definitely. And that's exactly what we do uh, at Warm News. So we call this the optimist's edge. First, we look at what people think about something, believe about something. And they're often very wrong, actually. They think things are going in the wrong, you know, the opposite direction that they, things are actually going. So just knowing that what people believe, and then adding to that, like we do, adding the facts to that, that gives you an optimistic edge. If you have a fact-based optimistic view about the world, if you look behind all the negative headlines, you get this get this fact-based view of the world. And you see opportunities like this. Most people will they will never be able to afford this, but actually most people will be able to afford it. So that's an edge, and those edges we do every week we look at different uh, areas to give you those kind of edges. So you if you want to uh, be part of the future, making the future uh, come soon. And this week we've been focusing on space, but like you say, the Optimist Edge are, is available within multitudes of fields, so I do urge you to check it out, because it's by bringing optimistic people together that we can really make the future come soon. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, all from us here in Dubai. We're signing off now. Uh, thank you so much for the Swedish pavilion that invited us, and to Cecilia Hetz, who arranged the Dominican design, who arranged this space week that we've been part of. Uh, and if you have the opportunity to visit the expo here, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. We've covered maybe 20 countries, and so there's like 170 left. Yeah, we, and, and the, the expo is going to be from now, from we're here, which is in October 2021, all the way until March 2022. So if you do have a chance, please visit. And I know that you can also visit quite a few of the events uh, virtually online through the expo site. So check it out, because when the world comes together like this, really interesting things happen. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. you. Bye.